check out this I Spy scroll. It's our version of the popular I Spy guessing game. Each scroll was made with beginning quilting blocks and scraps of novelty fabric. In this video, I'll show you how to make the scroll using a popular quilt as you go method. It's a good idea to try this technique in small scale before tackling a larger full size quilt. I'll quilt small, easy to handle blocks and then use sashing to join these blocks together. I won't be showing you how to sew the individual patchwork. You can use your own patterns for these blocks or try some of the six inch squares from our One Block Wonders section at learnhowtoquilt.com. The patterns are free and many have links to how-to videos. Each of our six inch squares focuses on a different set of quilting techniques. You can find these under our free patterns tab. Of course, you can always just cut squares filled with I Spy graphics. Then you wouldn't have to make any patchwork blocks. Are you ready to get started on this fun and educational project? You'll want to begin by gathering your supplies. You can find this free supply list at learnhowtoquilt.com under the Small Projects tab. For this scroll, I use 10 blocks, 5 on one side and 5 on the other side. I cut 5 six and a half inch squares of batting. You can use leftover scraps or if you don't have any batting, it's about a quarter of a yard. Then I used about an eighth of a yard for the sashing. That's two one inch strips and later on I'll cut these down into eight pieces one inch by six and a half inches long. You'll also need binding. I made my own uh, by cutting three two and one eighth inch strips of fabric. I've also listed a ten inch strip of elastic to keep the scroll in place, but it's not necessary. Lay out your blocks. Make sure they've all been pressed. The top row is what I want on one side of my scroll and the bottom row is for the other side. This is important as it's easy to get mixed up when assembling the scroll. I'll take the first and the last block and then I'll make a quilt sandwich with those two blocks and a six and a half inch square of batting. I'll go back to the board and I'll take the beginning and the last block to make another quilt sandwich. I'll continue in this manner until all the pairs have been put together into individual quilt sandwiches. There's several different ways to stitch or quilt the sandwich together. One of my favorite techniques is stitching directly in the seam line, aka stitching in the ditch. This works well when quilting a larger project with one fabric on the back, but these blocks have patchwork work on both sides. So when you quilt, you have to think about where those stitches will fall on the back. I'll give you some other simple stitching ideas to try if stitching in the ditch doesn't work out in your blocks. Now I'm ready to quilt each one of these sections. You'll want to use your walking foot if you have one. This is such a small piece and I'm using minimal quilting. I can get by by just using a regular foot. I do like to make my stitch length a little bit longer when I quilt, but um, that's personal preference. I'm using red thread so you can see. You'll probably want to use a matching color thread when you quilt. For this section, I'll stitch in the ditch. I like to start off with a little piece of fabric right up there. See my needle is coming down right next to that piece of fabric. I move my hands as I go along and this piece has now been quilted. You'll notice on this side that it puts a straight line right through the center of that jar. My next section has been pinned together and if I were to stitch in the ditch down this line. I really have some difficulty getting this lined up, but you know this is a small little piece and it's a good time to practice those quilting stitches if you want to practice lining things up, uh, but I'm not interested in that. 
Instead, I think I'll quilt this line uh, across here and uh, I'll just get a line going through the center. Start out by putting that down. I'm holding on to my fabric as I move through. I'm watching. I see how this fabric wants to bunch up and underneath the feed dogs are pulling the bottom. That's why it's a good idea to have your walking foot on and you'll avoid those problems. But as I said, this is small, not a lot of quilting, so it's doable just to use a regular foot. When you stitch in the ditch, you can barely see that quilting line. I use red thread. If you use a thread uh, like, let's say, white um, or a, a neutral color, or there's invisible thread on the market, you probably wouldn't be able to see that line at all. On this side, you can see that line. Uh, maybe a better design would have been to uh, draw a circle on here. Let's see. Oh yeah, a circle on here and quilt around that circle. I might try that on one of the other blocks. Since these are such small blocks, it's a good idea to try out different ideas. I use this as a guide to draw my circle and then I stitched on the line and I was pleased with this side but I realized that I need to work on adjusting this because when I turned it over it's off a little. It's okay but if I wanted everything to be perfect I, I need to try to get that circle to go between those two roof lines. That's what I like about this project. It gives me a chance to practice on small pieces and then make the decision, am I going to go with this or, or change up before I move to a larger quilt. When all the blocks have been quilted, you're ready to attach them to each other. I've cut these strips, eight of them, six and a half by one inch wide. Two strips will be needed between each of these sections. I like to start on the end of my scroll. This edge will have binding. This is the edge that I need to put my sashing. I'll take two of these strips and I'll put right sides together on this side. I'll turn it over. I'll put right sides together on this side and then pin. I'm ready to take this over to the sewing machine. I didn't use my walking foot because I wanted to show you what often happens if you're just using a regular foot. This sandwich is a little out of whack. It's a little bit longer here than up there because I only use three pins and there's lots of layers here so they start sliding as I sew. This is going to be okay if I'm just off a little but there's been times when I've been off a lot. Try using more pins to help prevent these layers from sliding as you sew. I took this over to the ironing board and I pressed each strip. I'll be sewing this next block to this strip. So I would put right sides together and then take that to the machine and sew that down. Now let me show you what the back of this looks like. This strip on this side I pressed and then I pressed a quarter of an inch down because after I sew the front of this strip, I'm going to take this piece and hand sew this down. So that's why I like that pressed edge. Some people like to do that after they've sewn all the pieces on the front. I find it easier when I'm pressing just to come in here, turn that down, and press. I sewed my quarter inch seam and Here's what the front of my block looks like. And let's turn to the back. I forgot to tell you earlier that I like to pin this back so it doesn't get caught up in that seam. Let me take those pins out and I'll turn this over. I like to stitch this down by hand, but some folks like to take this over to the sewing machine and stitch this down. But when you're working on a quilt that's got two sides, when you stitch this line down, it's going to come down in this sashing 
or over here into this quilt block. So that's why I just prefer to stitch this by hand. I'll continue adding sashing in this manner till I get to the last block. Let me review how I press this. So on this side, I press in this direction and I'll turn it back over. Now I'm ready to press that quarter inch. And so I just line this up. So see, I'm just lining lining this up with this seam here. Come down. So I press that. And after that's been pressed, then I take this and I pull this back and I press. And that's why I like these glass head pins because I like to keep this these sections pinned together if I'm working over here. And sometimes I hit them with the iron and I, uh, the glass head pins won't melt. I'm ready to attach my last block and I'll put right sides together. And so I've already pressed this so that after sewing I'll be ready to stitch that down. But I wanted to show you that when I added this block, I did it backwards. I put right sides together on the back and sewed that together. And this is the side that I pressed down and I'll hand stitch. I just got a little mixed up when I was pressing and that's why it ended up that way. But it's okay to mix it up like that. Before I finish up on each one of these scrolls, I wanted to show you how you would put together a whole quilt using this quilt as you go method. So let's pretend that each one of these is a row that's going to appear in your quilt. And you've added the sashing and you're all ready to now connect these sections. You're going to connect those sections the same way as you connected these sections. You'll cut two pieces of sashing as long as your rows. Now I'm just using scraps here uh, to show you, but you put right sides together and you'll take the other piece of sashing and put that on the back, right sides together, and you'll sew that quarter inch seam just like you did when you added those. Press. After you press, You'll put right sides together, sew it, and then on the back, you'll hand stitch that down. If you would like to add this elastic enclosure, then you need to roll up your scroll, then loosely measure around it with your elastic. Place the ends between the scroll and your binding. Now I have the pins out here, but this is kind of thick to pin through. So what I usually do is when I get to about here with sewing, that's when I put this elastic in and then I just stitch over the top of it. Here's my completed I Spy scroll ready to pull out on the next long car trip. I also like to use this as a story starter. It's a great way for kids to use their imaginations. Once upon a time there was a sailor who worked on a ship catching fish for cat food one day and then let the kids continue. I hope you get a chance to make a version of this I Spy Scroll. I'd love to post a photo of your completed project to share with our viewers. I'm sure you can come up with ways to improve on this design. Maybe add a pocket or try a different enclosure. For another quilt as you go method, check out our elementary quilt under the quilting classes tab. Thanks for visiting LearnHowToQuilt.com. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and share our videos with your friends.